Okay, this morning we're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We'll see if this sounds familiar to anybody. I have to lead my life in faith without seeing him. Does that sound familiar? It does? Does it to you? Does it to you? doesn't to me either. <clears throat> you know why? We don't read that version of the Bible. It was the description didn't sound familiar, but there have been times God has told me to do something, mm -hmm. and I've wanted to see Him. Like, okay, I, 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 probably been times, Lord, just show me. Just, would you just please show me? You know, to the equation, like, please, Lord, show me yourself, and then I'll know that. Like, or Lord, tell me verbally that you want me to do this. Then I will definitely know that you want me to do this. But He doesn't, and I have to go on faith. That's very good. Thank you. But that, that's mm -hmm. what I. That's what you want. Okay. Not the scripture. Okay, not the scripture. Okay. Um, I have to lead my life in faith <clears throat> without seeing him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's from the Moffat Bible. Um, and the King James, which we're more used to, says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. That sounds... Totally different. Two completely different things there. Read Moffat again. I have to lead my life in faith without seeing him. As if we have to walk in the dark without a clue. Read the King James. For we walk by faith, not by sight. It doesn't matter what we see. He titles this Insight not emotion. For a time we are conscious of God's attentions, then when God begins to use us in his enterprises, we take on a pathetic look and talk of the trials and the difficulties, and all the time God is trying to make us do our duty as obscure people. None of us would be obscure spiritually if we could help it. Can we do our duty when God has shut up heaven? Some of us always want to be illuminated saints with golden halos and the uh, flush of inspiration and have the saints of God dealing with us all the time. A guilted edged saint is no good. He is abnormal, unfit for daily life and altogether unlike God. Phew. <laughs> mm -hmm. We are here as men and women, not as half-fledged angels, to do the work of the world and to do it with an infinitely greater power to stand the turmoil because we have been born from above. If we try to reintroduce the rare moments of inspiration, it is a sign that is that it is not God we want. We are making a fetish of the moment when God did come and speak and, in, and insisting that we must do it again. Whereas what God wants us to do is to walk by faith. How many of us have laid ourselves by, as it were, and said, I cannot do any more until God appears to me? He never will and without any inspiration, without any sudden touch of God, we will have to get up. Then comes the surprise. Why? He was there all the time, and I never knew it. Never lived for the rare moments. They are surprises. God will give us touches of inspiration when he sees we are not in danger of being led away by them. All right, so this, mm -hmm. go, we'll finish reading it and I'll okay. jump back in there. We must never make our moments of inspiration our standard. Our standard is our duty. Okay, go back to the line just before that. Um, God will, uh, okay, let's see. God will give us touches of inspiration when he sees we are not in danger of being led away by them. This is different, but it's it's really the same. I was listening to Brother Mark Morgan this morning, 
and he was talking about, um, well, okay, of, of course, so because we're apostolic and we, we believe in the apostolic doctrine, um, we believe, though we don't see them like we should, we still believe that signs, wonders, miracles happen. Absolutely. Okay? God is still working. He's still a miracle-working God. He mm -hmm. still deals with his people by signs and wonders. Um, though, admittedly, we don't see them like we, we should. And that's not God's fault. No. Nope. That's nope. our fault. But he was talking about... Um, People, why, why is it that when people do work in the miracle uh, level, why do so many fall away? And he said because what he felt the Lord, because he, he works in signs and wonders, and he went through a very dark period in his life where um, there was just a disconnect for him. And because he had been um, battling something that he never thought he would battle. And he was seeking God and asking him, well, what is going on? He was depressed in depression. I mean, he just mm -hmm. he just was not connected. And it was all part of what he had to go through. But he said that he began to understand that working in the spirit, and in this instance we're talking um, the gifts of the Spirit, mm -hmm. that people that often work in the gifts of the Spirit, they lose sight. And I, again, this is different, but it's the same. They right. lose, they've been mm -hmm. used, they feel the power of God, and then they get confused and start to think that it's about how powerful they are, how great they are. Right. And right. they and that's why they end up falling away. Um, can they still... I mean, if a gift is given, God doesn't take it away. Right. But yet, at the same time, it doesn't mean it's glorifying God. But, you know, he said that he, he had to come to the realization, understanding that, and we're, whatever we do, and it, it, again, because he was talking about signs and wonders, about mm -hmm. gifts um, of miracles, but whatever we do for God, we have to do it in love. It can have no other purpose, and definitely not our own exaltation, mm -hmm. right. that whatever God has enabled us to do, because we're each enabled differently, our motivation, our drive, has got to be for love, and that's for love of His purpose and love of people. Mm. Um, cause, because beyond that, we, fee we have the possibility of easily falling away because of pride. Would be so easy to get you know full of ourselves. Well, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it is. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be, you know, praised and patted on the back and exalted and look special? Yeah, yeah. Picked, yeah. chosen. Yeah. And when we start seeking that from our uh, fellow man, and <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. yeah, I mean, but you know, being used of God. If we if we live on you know if we're living on previous and maybe that's it too if we're living on previous experiences mm -hmm. um, then we can excuse our own I guess our own fleshly turn of events um, when we don't have expectations of ourselves because those expectations have already been met right yeah. or. If we are continually to being used continually, and you know, flesh starts to get in there. I mean, look at Satan. You know, Satan, Lucifer at the time, he was the choir angel. He, he was. was the most beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, he was there to. What was he, his purpose? Was there to exalt God. Mm -hmm. And then he was chosen. He was used, and he was prideful. Um, and now, you know, he's, his eternity is sealed, and we've taken on, God's given us the responsibility to exalt right. him, right. to worship him. Yeah. He says, uh, a gilted-edged saint 
it's no good. I wondered what that meant too, Sonny. I looked it up and it was um, like gold covered, plate, gold plated. Is it gold soft? Well, it is, but it's also... When you touch it, it doesn't do this. Gold is is it, right? I mean, that's... Yeah, the golden calf. I mean, it's gold is is the the precious metal, right? Um, and and you know, we are not to be like that. You know, we shouldn't want to, we shouldn't seek to be um, you know, sought after or whatever. You know, that, you know how they how the Bible talks about the plating of your hair and stuff or inner they're weaving the gold and silvers and God stuff, knows but... How many hairs are on your head. Hmm? God knows how many hairs are on your head. He does. Um, you know, we're just... Supposed to go about our life humbly. Mm -hmm. You know, not trying to make a, <clears throat> a big scene and, you know, how noticeable we can be and stuff. Just mm -hmm. go about our life and be of service to God. Mm -hmm. Live a humble life. You know, trying to do what you know God's leading us to do. All right, let's wrap this one up before we get too uh, <clears throat> way too long. So, um, and again, uh, the the verses for we walk by faith, not by sight. And let's not let's not get caught up in our what things seem to be. What? Um, let's, let's walk by faith and not by circumstances that we, that we see with our uh, physical eyes. Things aren't always the way they appear. Mm -hmm. So let's pray. Is that what you want to pray for us today? Okay. Uh, Lord, we come before you today, and uh, we ask you to please help us to walk by faith, not by sight, because a lot of times you have told us to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Ask the Lord, can we just see you, or can we see this act done, then we know we can do it, or... Yes. Uh, we, we ask that you will please just help us to walk by faith, and not by sight. Yes. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.